So clearly, I knew racism existed as a child. The world treated me differently because I'm black. I felt it in subtle, covert ways and overt ways. Yet, I didn't always have the words for it. Instead, I withdrew into the world of books, writing, drawing, music, very solitary kind of activities. Meet Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop. Considered the mother of multicultural children's literature. She's an educator, she's also a professor. Dr. Bishop published her essay, Windows, Mirrors, and Sliding Glass Doors in 1990. She wrote, books are sometimes windows, offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange. These windows are also sliding glass doors, and readers have only to walk through in imagination to become part of whatever world has been created and recreated by the author. When lighting conditions are just right, however, a window can also be a mirror. Literature transforms human experience and reflects it back to us. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experience. Reading then becomes a means of self-affirmation and readers often seek their mirrors in books. Reading, self-affirmation, seeking mirrors in books. Let that resonate. I'm gonna repeat it again. Reading, self-affirmation, seeking mirrors in books. Books became my mirror at an early age, too. They offered me something that I couldn't get from the television shows in the 1980s, growing up in Canada, of course, or the movies that were around, or even the kids who didn't want to be my friend. Books gave me acceptance and affirmation and assurance. In 1940, Georges Duplay had the idea of creating durable and more affordable books to put them in the hands of all children. Sound like a familiar program that TD <laughs> sponsored last couple for me two years ago. The Little Golden Book was born. Nursery rhymes, alphabet books, Mother Goose, and bedtime stories were the topics of the first 12 titles. Each cost 25 cents. An early memory I have is sitting in the living room on my plastic-covered upholstered chair in our apartment in Jane and Finch, reading the pages of my Sesame Street book in the Golden Book series. My chubby fingers went over each word. On the final page, Blue Furry Grover declared, I'm tried. I'm tried? I figured that was one of those words that I would never understand. And years later, I realized what he was really saying when I could actually read it. And that was, I am tired. <laughs> According to my mom, I was an early and a fast reader. I love books. Yet, I repeatedly read this book, frustrated by that last word that didn't make sense. <laughs> there were other books, other golden books, dictionaries, encyclopedias, um, board books in our home. They were recognizable, familiar, and yet I remember more books that featured Muppets and animals. I didn't remember seeing a book with children like me. What if we imagine that our books are not just made of paper, words, and illustrations, binding and papers and covers, or digital sound bites? And just like Dr. Bishop said, sometimes the windows, the ones that we look through to understand characters with lives different from our own, what if the lighting conditions were just right so they became windows to our own lives? What if they were mirrors? What if they were portals to other worlds and possibilities? I'd like to share this testimonial from a mother I'll call Y. I'm writing to you because I just read your book about Malaika. This story is unbe unbelievably my daughter's story. I have a daughter called Malaika, who I had to leave behind in Africa, Uganda, with her grandmother to find a job here in Canada. I left her in 2016. While I was here working hard to get her here, I married P, the love of my life. I found your book that mirrors our life. 
I read it with my Malaika and we had tears in our eyes. My Malaika landed during the winter as well. How could you have known our story before it happened? I am blown away. My daughter would love to hear or talk to you if possible. We are in, in disbelief because you wrote her story. So when I got this, um, I think this was sent to me in an Instagram message. I, I freaked out. <laughs> I freaked out. Um, so that was my personal reaction. Maybe you're having a, a reaction right now. I'm just going to read it from what I recall. This is the first carnival time with mommy gone. She in Canada, Uncle E would say. Canada is a place where she can get a good job. She's going to make a better life for you and granny. Canada is cold like an icebox. And something they call snow is on the ground, mommy tell me. She sent us pictures too. The snow looked like coconut sky juice. She said that children play in it and build man with it. What a sticky mess. <laughs> <laughs>